Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I enjoy talking about code on this here channel. Today we are going to be delving into a very exciting new piece of news which is React 18 has been formally, officially announced. Very, very exciting. I saw the news happen this past week and pretty much stopped everything that I was doing, including breathing, which was a very uncomfortable thing to do, to read uh, all about React 18 to share it with you. So I've been delving through all the news, there's a lot to, to understand, and this video is just to give you the raw essential information that you need to know about React 18. The perspective I'm taking is you already have a React application, assuming it's React 17 or near to it, and you want to know why will you be upgrading to React 18? Because I imagine you will be. And this is the video for you. There are four main takeaways that I wanna make sure that you understand before this video is over. I care so much about these four takeaways that I'm going to tell you them right now, rather than tease you until the end of the video, because who has time for that? So the first one, the first takeaway, is that the upgrade to React 18 will be easy. Uh, they emphasize heavily on the blog post that the upgrade to React 18 will be seemingly almost as easy as the upgrade to React 17, which if you were, if you need a reminder, the whole point of React 17 was to make future upgrades easier with itself being a uh, release that's easy to upgrade to. So React 18 is holding that tradition and making it easy to upgrade to it. Point the second, uh, it is not done. It's not done. It is currently what they're calling in library alpha, which means that it is an alpha release geared solely to library authors, people who make libraries on top of React. And the point of that is to work with the library authors and make sure that when React 18 is finalized, the libraries that are used widely in the community are updated and ready to be used with React 18. So it's being geared to them in particular. Not only that, they actually gave a timeline of when the final version of 18 will be out and it will be at least a while. Um, they've learned the lessons to give no promises because broken promises hurt more than not breathing. That's just a weird metaphor. But they have a whole section on their site saying the library alpha is available today. The public beta in several months, at least several months, the RC at least several weeks after the beta, and the general availability at least several weeks after the RC. So if you like Bleeding Edge, have fun, but for now, don't worry about it. Point the third, which is a weird way to say the third, but there are some actually new exciting features coming with React 18. There are some new things that are purely additive in nature, that will make your applications potentially better. You could also upgrade to React 18 and not use any of the new feature features and still have a better time. And the fourth and final point, which doesn't really have any relevance to the release itself, it's more about the community of React, is that they have introduced the React 18 Working Group, which is a panel of experts, developers, library authors, and educators, educators from across the community to provide feedback, ask questions, and collaborate on the release. Um, it's been a long pain point of the community that the React team is very close-knit, which is a gift and a curse because they can work well together, but then it can kind of make communications externally difficult. And this is the React core team trying to fix that with a working group. And I've actually really loved what they've done here. The entire working group is on a new Git repo and all discussions are happening on GitHub's new discussions feature. So thank you GitHub for making that possible for the React team. And they're kind of uh, blending a nice middle ground here where these people they've invited to be part of the working group, library authors, experts, educators, not me, uh, <laughs> I'm not educated enough, uh, can comment in the discussions, but and everyone can read these discussions, but nobody else can comment. So it's read only from everyone, which means that you have the same information that they do, but just to limit the noise and, and the confusions, it's being limited to be write only to a subset of people. So I think it's kind of a healthy middle ground to take to make you know the transparency increase while not overburdening the core team to try to answer every question from everybody in the React community, because 
I would not be able to handle that myself, let alone them. So, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so those were the four main takeaways that I wanted to make sure that you were aware about. Uh, if you want, you can turn off the video and be on your merry way. Uh, if you are curious, I'm going to be now diving a little bit deeper into the details of React 18. Uh, not that deep, I'm not doing a deep dive because everything in, is in flux right now, inside joke. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of give you kind of the lay of the land about what is new, um, but not as far beyond just what you have to look forward to. First things first, let's talk about upgrading to React 18 on the client, which is all I ever worry about, but I will cover server side in a second. Uh, there's two steps to upgrade to React 18 on the client. Upgrade to React 18, and switch to the new root API. By that, what they mean is that currently, the way that you bootstrap, create a new React application on a browser is you have react-dom.render and you render the application on an element. In React 18, they are also providing a new way to do that, which will be the way that they want you to do to upgrade and will be the way that will be done for all future versions until it changes again, which I don't imagine it happening, but essentially react dom dot render to react dom create root. And then on that root instance, render your application. And the thing that's awesome about react 18 is that you don't actually have to do this when upgrading to react 18. Now they go out of their way in the working group to say that they don't consider the upgrade complete until you actually do switch the API usage to this new way, but they're still providing the old API, um, it, mostly for ease of upgrade, and it also has a way for you to regression test the difference when you change the root of your application. And that's kind of the high level of upgrading on the client. That's all you have to do. Um, using the new root API enables new React 18 features that I'll again be covering in a bit, but again, you could potentially upgrade to React 18 and not change any code, and it'll still work. It just won't be technically updated. But again, what they've seen is when switching to this new API, largely things work. So you should be able to switch to that with no problem. Now, upgrading to React on the server follows the similar trend as the client, where you have to upgrade to React 18 and then switch from the current render to string API to the new and recommended pipe to node writable. And again, React 18 includes all these APIs, but you won't actually be considered upgraded until you actually use this new method. They haven't talked about when or if they'll ever remove these old methods, but they're providing both to make the upgrade as easy as possible. Now, one thing I should note is that they actually have full in-depth pages about what these new APIs mean and what they unlock. They are beefy, they are long, and I don't fully understand them myself yet. I've read them a couple of times, but I still need to read them more to get understanding about what they do. So if you are curious, read them at your, read them at your own leisure. Um, I may make a video about them, no promises. Um, this one's even beefier, the full suspense support with uh, server side. Uh, there's even a, you know that a thing is complicated when there's a too long didn't read at the top. Uh, but this has got even graphs, which is lovely. It helps to understand it, but again, very complicated. And I know that as I just spew information, I will get something wrong. And I'd rather just take more time to actually understand this than say anything and just prefer that you read them if you have a burning desire to understand what's going on underneath the covers. These aren't needed to be known. Like you don't need to know the contents of all these things. This is mostly like, you know, peeling back the covers, how the uh, sausage is made. Sausage sounds good, but you don't need to know about it. Just It's just good to know that they both do exist. Now, as mentioned, there are new features coming with React 18, which is awesome. And the best thing about them is they are all opt in. Mwah. There's a whole list of the out of the box improvements that you will get with React 18. Um, the caveat here is that you still need to use that new root API, but you should still, once you do, which should be painless, you'll get these things for free. The one that I am most excited about is this first one, automatic batching for fewer renders in React 18. Um, I can geek out about this, but the short version is 
Sometimes in React, if you had two set states in a function, we have an example here. If you had two set, set states in a function, React would wait until both of those were done before it would re-render the page. Sometimes. The reason, the details behind that is in the page. It has to do with events and whatever, but ignore that for now. Um, however, sometimes when that would, React would not do that. They would not actually batch these things. It would actually have one set state, render, one set state, render, which is not that performant. And the thing that's great about React 18 is that now React will, in more cases, batch state updates, which means that you will now be able to call set state, set state, and then React will only render once. And again, this is a thing that you don't have to think about. React is just doing that for you in React 18 through its new infrastructure and underlying code. So in upgrading to React 18, things should just get faster for free. Yeah, that's the good points to know about. Also, which I don't care as much because I don't use React on a server, but a thing that's important to know is that there is now server-side support for suspense, which there wasn't before, it would just error out. And there's also some fixes for suspense behavior quirks. Suspense is the way to have React stop rendering a part of the UI while other things happen. That's a whole topic unto itself. I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I get confused about it myself. Outside of these out-of-the-box improvements that you get for free with React 18 comes a bunch of brand new APIs. And who doesn't love me some brand new APIs? The thing that all these new APIs have in common is that it brings in, finally, officially, some real support for concurrent features. Now, Concurrent and React has a history that is a lot of inside baseball, a lot of like inner workings about how React works. Um, the short version that you should know about is that Concurrent mode will make expensive page transitions less expensive. It'll make your UI more responsive by having a way to control how and when React updates your application. The one that I find most uh, exciting, which is the one that they've also only documented so far, again, this is brand new stuff, is this new Start Transition API. And the example that they have in here, which is great, is that let's say you have a long list of items in a table and you have a client side filter and you can type in the input box filter to change what you're searching for and it'll change the contents. And I'm sure you've had this happen to you if you've, it's happened to me where you type a query in and the UI chokes because it takes a long time and it's expensive to actually update the, the UI in the table. So before what happened with React is that you would set state for the input and you set state for the search query and then React would just render everything and your UI would freeze for a second or two. With this new start transition API, you can actually tell React that when you update that table of data to make it a transition, it means that it is non-urgent and can be interrupted. And what that translates to is, let's say someone types in Harry as the input value, and then you try to the search query for that. And let's say, oh, they meant actually to talk about my evil twin, Barry, and they delete it and type in Barry. React can actually stop what it's doing in here and go back to here and update that query filter, which means that as you type, that always feels responsive and clean and nice and shiny, and you don't really care about the content. You want to care that your keyboard is being received. So you can actually, React can actually pause the data filter and go back and update the input element. And that's awesome for these very heavy uh, UI transitions. So this is a new feature that, uh, again, you don't really need it. Like if you don't, if you've ever had this problem, don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about it. But for people that have had these issues, which I have had, and if you get to any certain use cases, you will end up in these cases, there's now a solution built into React by default. Well, built in to React in the future, React 18 comes out. But again, very exciting that this is a thing that they're solving for. And these are the other APIs that are coming, which uh, I would tell you more about, but I don't know about them because it's not documented. And I'm not going to look through the React repo commits to understand what they are. Okay, and that is what you need to know right now about React 18. It is not final, it is not done. Things will change and evolve a little bit over the next couple of months. And I'll keep you updated as things happen, but that's kind of what you need to know today, right now about React 18. So hopefully you found that helpful in a large part. Deeper dives may be coming, and for that I'll put on my deep dive hat. 
or a scuba hat, which I don't have either of those, but I'll find one somewhere. But hopefully you enjoyed that video and you feel a little bit more relaxed and not having to worry too much about React 18. Uh, that's this video for today. If you're not a subscriber, please do become one for more videos just like this, where I just talk about React 18 every week. That'd be weird. But no, become a subscriber if you are not already. And I'll see you again with a new video next week. And until then, stay happy, stay good. See you then. Bye.